Good morning. Uh, how are you doing this morning? Hope you're doing well on this Monday. Um, tough portion of scripture here this morning. A uh, story that I've always identified with, um, but uh, not for good reasons. Uh, there's a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 15 uh, called the prodigal son, which really should be more properly named the story of the loving father. But the prodigal son is not the only son in the story. And unfortunately, the prodigal son is not the son in the story that I most identify with. Um, there are two sons in the story. And today we're going to focus on the older son. And there's one word that uh, I want to challenge you with that the Lord has been lovingly challenging me with this morning, and it's expectations. Um, for years I had the opportunity of working with college students, and, um, and I can remember one in particular who uh, would oftentimes negatively report his childhood and his upbringing and his history, and then always couldn't wait till the next thing. Couldn't wait till he got past this, couldn't wait till he got past that, couldn't wait till he got past the next thing, but was unable to appreciate his present reality. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. There is a plague in all of us to be over-concerned with our past, over-concerned with our future, and completely ungrateful, uninvolved, or not present in our present. And I find that that is true with this second son, so or the second brother. So. In this story, you know the story, the prodigal son asked for his money from his dad. That was rude, that was wrong, that was devastating. Then he came to his senses, what a great moment. And then he came back to the father. And when he came back to the father, the father responded in a completely ridiculous, reckless way. And, um, and then the brother, the older brother, who had just been doing his stuff right, just been doing his stuff right. But here again is that word, expectations. He was doing his stuff right, and we don't really know his motives or his reasons for doing the right things until a moment. Until a moment happened that his expectations were shattered. And I'll tell you what, I feel like we as a nation, we as a people, skip that. Me as a dude has had expectations like, okay, we'll do this for this long, we'll do this for that reason. Fair enough, makes sense. But man, once those expectations start to get shattered, or once those expectations, she's like, dude, this is crazy, this is wrong. Man, who we really are, or maybe more accurately, who we really are not, is revealed. So I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to do any of that. I'm here to invite you and me to allow the Lord to show us what's true about us. So here's what was, re let's learn from somebody else. It's always easy to learn from somebody else because I'm sure you're not struggling, but you probably have a friend. So anyway, the older brother, verse 28 says, was angry. He wasn't going to go into the party that this dad was throwing for the brother, but the dad came out to him. Now remember, the dad ran to the prodigal son coming home, and the dad came out to the older brother. The Lord comes to wherever we are, even if we're where we shouldn't be. The Lord came out to him, and the dude unleashed on his dad and said, all these years I've slaved for you, never once refused to do a single thing you told me. And all that time you never even gave me so much as a frozen burrito. <laughs> Yet this son of yours, doesn't even call him his brother, his son of yours comes back and you squandered money on prostitutes, da 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 He knows all the details about what his brother had done. And his father, verse 31, says, look, dear son, look, Dear son, that matters. What God calls us in the middle of our wretchedness, what God calls us in the middle of our wrong, what God calls us when our wrong expectations and our sin is revealed, this father says, look, dear son. Those words, look, dear son. The word look is like, dude, I'm about to teach you something. But he follows it with, dear son. What is the Lord saying to you and to me today? Look, dear son. Look, dear daughter. He continues, says, you have always stayed by me. That's true. And everything I have is yours. That's also true. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So here's the nugget for the day. Does what matters to the Father matter to us? Or are our expectations more important than what matters to the Father? Today I invite you to allow the Lord to align you, Jesus do it with me, to line us up with Lord what matters to you and help it matter to me. And Lord, part of that is I crucify my expectations, my rights, what matters to you, let it matter to me. And thank you, Father, for giving me a look, dear son moment. Give me all the look, dear son moments I need. Teach me, correct me. Now I gotta finish this. 
Verse 32, the father went back in to celebrate with the son that was lost, but now is found. The story's left open-ended of what the older brother did. The lost son who was really lost was found. The good son who had always done all the, checked all the boxes and kept all the rules, we don't know whether he lined up with what mattered to the father or not. By God's grace, may we line up with what matters to the father. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd give us look dear son, look dear daughter moments today. May we respond with a teachable spirit. And Lord Jesus, I pray that our expectations would not exist. Lord, I pray that our only expectation is to follow you. Show us the truth about you, the truth about us. And Lord, may we truly be faithful sons and daughters, whether you meet our expectations or not, whether the time frame of our life, whether all of the stuff around us makes sense or not. We trust you. Oh, for grace to trust you more. Amen. Have a great day. Love you.